hello guys welcome back to my channel today's video is the last episode of our series on the summary of second class citizen by Ibuchi Emecheta if you haven't watched the first and second episodes please let me know in the comment section so I can give you the links it's important for you to watch them so you can follow up on this one in the second episode we start when Ada got pregnant with the fourth child after an attempt to prevent the pregnancy failed after Ada discovered that she was pregnant, she went to an Indian doctor and told him about her predicament and asked him to help her terminate it. The doctor gave her some pills which did not work. At work, Ada became more friendly with her colleagues who she had not been associating with. After discovering she was still pregnant, she confronted the doctor and the doctor said the drugs that she received from him was not meant to abort the baby. But Ada knew it was meant for that because of what happened to her after she took the drugs. She warned the doctor that he would be blamed if the baby was born imperfect. On her way home, she met an able man, Mr. Obara, who followed her home and encouraged Francis to get a job so that his sons can respect him. Mr. Obara did not mention the girl child, Titi, as if Titi does not exist. Ada decided to attend all the prenatal classes and take good care of herself throughout this pregnancy. She told Francis to cater for himself because the money she had was running low and that she would fend for their children. Francis asked her to write it down. She did without hesitation. Hunger drove Francis to start working as a clerical officer in a post office. He did not tell Ada how much he earned. He only paid the rent and gave Ada, Ada three pence to run the house. Then Ada told him that she would go into civil service and wouldn't tell him how much she earned and the date she was to be paid. First he said he would then prevent her from working. Then Ada reminded him that they were in England where a husband's signature is not required for his wife to be employed. When Ada was to have her baby, she made the arrangement for flowers to be delivered to her at the hospital. And she made sure she put up a smile all through her stay in the hospital. When she was discharged, she tipped the nurses that took care of her and wrote them a thank you letter when she got home. Francis did not care about Ada all through the period she stayed in the hospital. But Ada made sure she took care of herself and the baby. So Ada decided to try her hand in writing, which had always been her dream. So she bought a book that helped her to learn how to write and sat down to write all through the period she was nursing the new baby. During this period, she wrote the manuscript of the book she was going to call The Bright Prize. Ada enjoyed the fact that she was beginning to live like a housewife during the period she was nursing Bubu, that is the new baby. She would take Titi, the first child, to the nursery and the babies to the park and do her shopping. She discovered that she could have three hours of quietness after the children had had lunch and she would use those three hours to write the novel The Bright Prize and also use those three hours to knit sweaters for Francis and the children. After she is done writing The Bright Prize, she gave it to her colleague at the library to read and they did and told her to consider publishing because it was really interesting but Ada did not have the intention of publishing that particular script and one of her colleagues, Bill, called the script Ada's brainchild because Ada said she felt fulfilled after writing it and she felt as if she just had a child. At home, she persuaded Francis to read it, but he refused. One early morning, as Ada went to shop for the house, Francis read and burnt the script. When Ada saw what he did, she could not take it, because to her, Francis just killed her brainchild, which means Francis can kill her children. She got a job in British Museum as a library officer. Francis quit his job as the clerical officer in a post office because he felt Ada was earning enough money to take care of the family, but Ada maintained her stand on Francis taking care of himself. She got a two-room apartment where she had to cope with cockroaches and rats and moved with her children. She decided to move into a new apartment due to the constant beating that she received from Francis. 
And as she was leaving, she was badly beaten again by Francis to the extent that Mr. Nobo had to involve the police. She left with her children and a bag of rags which are her children's clothes. Francis promised not to look for her and her bastards. And I was pleased to hear that. After one month, Francis talked to Titi and Vicky till he discovered where they lived. One afternoon, Francis came banging at the window. Ada opened the door and questioned Francis what he was doing in her house after he promised not to look for them. Francis told her that in their culture there is no such thing as divorce or separation and that his father used to knock his mother about and his mother never left his father. Then Anna went on to ask him if there was any month his father did not pay the rent, if there was any day his father did not provide food and clothes for him and asked him if there is anything his children can say that he had ever bought for them. And I regretted why she did not see the red flowers when they were dating. When they were dating, Francis never gave anything to his mom. Rather, it was his mom that gave him. Other Nigerian students in England combined their studies with work to earn money and send to their mothers. But he did not want to do the same because he does not care about his mom. And that is the same reason he does not care about her. As they kept on arguing, fight ensues and Ada was badly beaten again and Francis threatened her with a knife. The landlord, who is a Nigerian, did not intervene in the fight because he believes it's just a squabble between a husband and a wife and which is common amongst Nigerian couples. They kept on fighting until an Irish man living upstairs intervened and Ada sued Francis to court and her refused to invite the doctor that treated her to testify in the court because if she did, Francis would go to prison. Even when the doctor offered to testify against Francis in court, Ada did not want Francis to go to prison. All she wanted was for Francis to leave her alone. In court, Francis denied all the allegations and even at her surgery that he broke, he said it was just an accident that he didn't even know that it was a radio, whereas he intentionally broke the radio just to break Adha's heart. He also denied being married to Adha and told Adha in the native language that he had burnt their passports and the children's birth certificate. As a result, there was nothing for Adha to show as an evidence to prove that she was married to Francis. And Ada could not provide a marriage certificate when she was being asked by the court to provide a marriage certificate to prove that she was married to Francis. And when the judge noticed that he was living with a wise man, asked Francis to make contribution towards the upbringing of the children. And Francis said he would rather have them adopted. But Ada did not agree to this. Rather, she said that the children were hers and she would not disappoint them. She left the courtroom, despising the court, and met her old classmate who paid the taxi that took her home. This is where the novel ends. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you understood it and can answer any question on this particular novel in your exam. Please click on the like button, click on the subscribe button, and share the video to your friends. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time in another video. Bye for now.